The little town of Malinalco lies at the margins of the Valley of Tepoztlan, some 115 kilometers to the southwest of Mexico City. Since pre-Hispanic times, its name has been associated with magic and sorcery. Malinalsochitl, goddess of the snakes, was worshipped on the Cerro de los Idolos, a hill overlooking the entire valley and the town below. In 1470, a temple was built on the hill as a sanctuary and a center of initiation for the military elite of the Aztec Empire, the Eagle and Jaguar warriors. The origins of the site may, however, date back hundreds or even thousands of years earlier. The Temple of the Eagle Warriors, known locally as Chan, is a unique monolithic structure that has no equals in all of Mesoamerica. It consists of a number of chambers dug out of the living rock and a monumental stepped pyramid also carved out of the cliff face. The main temple is perched on a ledge which rises 125 meters above the town. For its remote and inaccessible location, it was only discovered in 1933 and explored by Mexican archaeologist José García Payón in 1935. Upon reaching the level of the first rock ledge, we encounter the first of a number of large rock-cut trenches that were apparently left unfinished. From there, a narrow pathway gives access to a small plaza closed on three sides by ceremonial structures and platforms. To the west of the plaza stands a small circular altar dedicated to Ecatl, the god of the wind, while to the east stands a ceremonial pyramid built in the typical Aztec style of small volcanic stones cemented together. On the north side is the Kokali, or House of the Eagles, in the shape of a stepped pyramid entirely dug out of the living rock. A stairway gives access to a spacious circular rock-cut chamber with benches in the shape of mythological animals, eagles, and jaguars. Further to the east is a round structure that was similarly used for the initiation ceremonies of the warrior elite of the Aztec Empire. This entire sector rests on massive retaining walls. From there, a short stairway gives access to a large rectangular rock-cut chamber. Further east, along the cliff face, an aqueduct carried rainwater to a cistern lying at a lower level. The monolithic temples are reached by a modern stairway of over 420 steps. The original access might have been by similar pathway as remains of steps and stairs cut into the rock are still visible at places. The climb also offers spectacular views of the Valley of Malinalco and its curious rock formations. The unique character of the monolithic architecture of Malinalco becomes immediately apparent from even the first of the several rock-cut trenches that are found to the west of the main temple. At places, the rock surface appears very eroded, and it is not clear whether these portions of the site were simply left unfinished or are the remains of some badly eroded structures. From this rock-cut trench, one gains access to the small plaza facing the main temple, known as the House of the Eagles. The House of the Eagles is a unique example of monolithic architecture. It was carved directly into the hillside, 
without the aid of metal tools, as these were not known to the Aztecs. Further to the east, on a continuation of the same rock ledge that was artificially enlarged by means of massive retaining terraces, are a number of chambers and circular structures. Their workmanship appears rather crude in comparison to the precision of the monolithic architecture. For the construction of the House of the Eagles, the rock was carved in the shape of a three-tiered pyramid rising from a high podium, which was similarly carved in the living rock. A single monolithic stairway leads to the top, flanked by balustrades on both sides and seated jaguar statues that might have served as standard bearers now badly defaced. In antiquity, the building would have possessed a conical roof, which has led to speculation that the peculiar shape of the chamber and its roof could have served as a solar observatory, perhaps with the addition of a zenith tube, an opening in the roof through which sunlight would pierce the obscurity of the chamber at particular times of the year. Access to the temple is now possible by means of a modern wooden stairway. The temple itself is flanked by a pair of statues standing guard to each side of the entrance. The one to the right, probably depicting a warrior but now missing its upper part, rests on a serpent head, while the one to the left of the entrance sits on what appears to be a carved drum pierced by a number of drilled holes. A single doorway gives access to the sanctuary. The door was sculpted in such a way as to represent the open jaws of the earth monster. The main chamber is circular in shape, with a bench running around the perimeter. The workmanship of this section is extraordinarily accurate, with a number of high-relief figures in the form of eagles and jaguar skins carved upon the bench. An altar in the shape of an eagle stands in the center of the room. The presence of a channel that drains into a perfectly circular hole drilled through the floor of the chamber proves that bloody sacrifices were once performed on the altar. On the right-hand side of the House of the Eagles, a rock-cut stairway oriented at an angle with the main temple would have led to further platforms above, which have not been excavated nor cleared of vegetation. There is evidence that an earlier ceremonial site might have stood closer to the summit of the hill, dating perhaps to Totiwakan times around the 1st and 2nd century AD. A large complex of chambers to the east follow roughly the same plan as that of the House of the Eagles. We find there another circular structure called Structure 3, which probably served a similar purpose as suggested by the presence of an altar in the middle. The workmanship of this part of the site is typically Aztec. Rather than being cut from the cliff face, the walls of these chambers consist of smaller volcanic rocks cemented together. The walls were also originally stuccoed for traces of the frescoes were discovered during the 1935 excavations by archaeologist Jose Garcia Payón. The subject of these frescoes, of which only drawings survive, 
was probably related to the military and initiatic ceremonies that were conducted at the site. The largest structure on the site is an immense rock cut chamber with a front of over 20 meters, known as Structure 4. This has been entirely cut in the living rock with astonishing precision. Further to the east of this chamber, on a small rock ledge that was also artificially leveled, a number of interesting rock carvings are visible. They seem to form a small space divided in two by a partition wall or a kind of double throne not unlike similar rock carvings found in Peru and at other megalithic sites around the world. These aqueducts continue in the form of narrow stone conduits further along the cliff's face until some sort of reservoir. Structure 4 is in fact an immense rock cut chamber cut directly out of the cliff face. The chamber is rectangular, measuring nearly 20 meters on its longer side by 10 on its shorter side. It is open to the east and has a carved bench running along the perimeter of the walls. A number of pillar bases and a rectangular basin, probably serving as an altar, are also similarly cut from the living rock. The depth of the cut reaches at least 5 meters on the northern side of the chamber. In addition, the upper portion of the cliff face appears to have been artificially leveled, perhaps at an even earlier epoch than that of the main temple itself. It is possible that from this chamber alone at least 1,000 cubic meters or 3,000 tons of rock were removed in ancient times. The astonishing precision of the cut, which left very smooth and remarkably planar rock face, with no visible chisel or other tool marks, suggests the use of tools that would have hardly been available to the Aztecs or any other known Mesoamerican civilizations of antiquity. In all of Mesoamerica, a similar style of monolithic architecture is only found among the ruins of Texcoco, which bear a distinct similarity with the rock-cut temples in Malinalco, although on a much smaller scale. As in the case of Malinalco, the perfectly cut and polished stone basins, stairways, and rock-cut chambers of Texcoco exhibit a level of workmanship far in advance of what could have been achieved with simple stone tools. In addition, the significant erosion to which the rock surface has been subjected in both cases is indicative of an antiquity far more remote than the supposed 15th or 16th century assumed dates of the carvings. Another point of similarity with the ruins of Texcoco is offered by the presence of rock-cut aqueducts. A number of water channels can be found at Malinalco, particularly on the upper terraces. 
Their great antiquity is testified by the fact that they appear in some cases to have been cut by later structures and rocket trenches. Rainwater would have been collected into these channels from the upper terraces and the roofs of buildings until some reservoir or basin lying at a lower level. There are also a number of jumps in the aqueducts that would have formed small waterfalls during the rainy season. The upper terraces of the site are of difficult access and are largely overgrown. The presence of monolithic stairways and water channels suggests that more structures existed in the upper slopes of the hill, which have not been excavated. Some of the rock-cut aqueducts and water channels visible in this area would have served to drain the rainwater from the roofs of buildings, although it is possible they could also form a part of an earlier layer of construction. This entire portion of the site rests on massive retention walls built from smaller cemented stones during Aztec times. A trail leads along the fortification walls that would have made the site almost impregnable when it was defended by Aztec warriors. A number of monolithic stairways can be found, other than at the main site, also at the nearby temple of Tlaloc, which is separated from it by a deep ravine. It is hard to find an explanation for these monolithic stairways, for they end abruptly on the face of the ravine. It is possible, though, that a circular basin like the one at Descoco originally existed at the base of the stairway. From the area of the temple of Tlaloc come two very enigmatic bas reliefs, now preserved in the local museum of Malinalco. One is a spiral through which water was apparently meant to flow by means of a narrow channel. The other is a kind of labyrinth formed by interconnected segments of unknown significance. In both cases, the precision of the cut of these simple geometrical figures is remarkable. It is possible they were used over the course of initiatic rituals or magical ceremonies. A legend still prevalent among the local population is that Malinalco formed part of a sacred triangle with the nearby sites of Xochicalco and Tepoztlan, where strange magnetism and other unexplained phenomena are said to occur at certain times of the year. To this day, many people report suffering from dizziness, nausea, and even fainting upon approaching the mysterious Cerro de los Idolos with its monolithic temples. The solution to the mystery lies perhaps still buried in the upper and still unexplored parts of the hill near the summit, or in one of the many enchanted caves that are said to exist in the area.